This here is a 2007 Harley Davidson Heritage Softail. Now, it didn't always look like this. In fact, it was a beautiful bright blue, tons of chrome. This thing was fully loaded, had all the gadgets and accessories, leather bags, custom pipes, you name it. But it was stolen, vandalized, wrecked, and years later recovered, and then I ended up with this thing. So I'll fill you in on the whole story on this bike. Plus, we're gonna see if we can get this thing running again and back on the road. I am definitely due for a ride. There's vines growing through everything. So right away, some of you might be going, how does a feller know all the history on this bike? Well, it's actually pretty simple. See, this motorcycle used to belong to my older brother, Chris, who you've seen on the channel quite a few times. And here's what this motorcycle used to look like. It was absolutely gorgeous. Now, Chris and I, we rode together all over the state of North Dakota. And then we started riding together in Western South Dakota, through all the hills, Turtle Mountains, Black Hills. We went to Sturgis Motorcycle Rally, you name it. And this was just a great bike. I was riding that maroon. Remember that uh, Ultra Glide classic we stripped down to look like a beggar, the one that was wrecked? That's what I was riding and he was riding this for most of the time. But it was just a beautiful motorcycle. Now he got a newer one, I think it was about 10 years newer, uh, slate gray, a little bit updated, stuff like that. So he was going to sell this heritage soft tail. So he actually left it in South Dakota, Rapid City, South Dakota, because it's a bigger market to sell a motorcycle. And there's also a gigantic Harley Davidson there, pretty much a superstore. So he left it with my younger brother. Well, my brother was riding it to work, you know, as he should, and doing things of that nature. And this motorcycle actually got stolen in downtown Rapid City. Now, we searched high and low, and we were calling dealers, and we searched the Craigslist and the Face Space and all of these different sites and auction blocks, and better part of a couple of years, and we finally just gave up on the motorcycle. It was gone. We had figured, in fact, that this thing was just stripped, blown apart, and just used for pieces and parts, you know? Now you gotta fast forward a couple of years, my older brother calls me and says, you're never gonna believe what just happened. The Wyoming State Patrol just pulled over a Harley Davidson doing like 111 miles an hour or something like that, 109, I can't remember exactly. And uh, a short little high speed pursuit there, finally got the guy pulled over. And because of the aggressive driving and the speeding, they actually ran the VIN on this thing. And for whatever reason, they never filed the VIN on the frame. They never took the sticker off on the frame. They never filed the VIN on the engine. It all still matches. They ran it and bingo, came back as a hot bike. So years later, he gets the call, we found your motorcycle, but uh, <laughs> well, she ain't look like she used to. You know, they obviously tried to camouflage this thing and did a just completely terrible job. Well, he already had the other new motorcycle, so he sold it to me. I got a pretty darn good deal on it. I threw it up on my trailer, and this is what it looked like sitting in Rusty Acres, well, for a couple of years. So we've got quite a bit of work to do. I've got no key. This does turn. There's wiring just blown out of this thing. Um, I've got a new hot battery and a couple other things. I've done a lot of bikes, I'm gonna be honest, but they are all pre-fuel injection. This has got a, a digital fuel make it happen or pump on it. It's got squirter nozzles and the tuberculosis injector over here. 
I don't quite know what's going on. We're going to have to fumble through this thing. But like I say, my goal is to get this thing fired back up and go for a rip. But let's walk around this and drink it up. We might have to pick up some parts and pieces. I'm seeing baling wire and tape and zip ties and it's a mess. Bring your broom. Well, let's take a closer look at this thing here. It's not a 107. Right away, that's wrong. It's actually a 96. It would have had more of the egg-shaped air cleaner on it originally. I don't know how many miles are on this thing. I guess we'll have to find out if we get it fired up. I want to say it had like 32,000 or something, like, or 31,000 when it got stolen. Who knows now? Uh, different front fender. That's kind of a... That looks like a more of a soft tail, regular soft tail, kind of the FX STs or one of the other 97 Harley Davidson models. They're kind of like Mopar. They just make a bunch of stuff up, but it's really all the same. This is a soft tail rear wheel. They did change the rear wheel out, but they left the front one a wire wheel. This rear one would have been wire as well, I believe. Could be wrong, probably not. This tire was replaced at some point. I know this because of the way that it is. And also, my older brother, they're always bald. Now this front one would have been one that he put on years ago and it's, it's uh, weather checking and cracking really bad. So we're gonna have to keep that in mind if we do go for a spin. This is all bent up here. This is from my brother. That's how hard he rode this thing and leaned it over he would actually scrape the pegs on this. We, we really get into them when we ride, you know what I mean? Still got the rear pegs. There would have originally been nice leather saddlebags here with some, I don't know, they were bedazzled and stuff like that. No idea where the LP went on it. It's got no plates. Belt is probably rotten. We can try to look at the condition of that. Um, no idea what that, if that cover was on there or not. It's had some, the mice have been into it. It was sitting out all this time. It's been in the weather pretty much nonstop. This wiring, I, help me understand what's going on here. Got buttons and doodabs and miscellaneous fuse holders and everything like that. Now I think this bike has the Securitai. So if you don't have, I'm not quite sure how that works, but I know you have to have a key or a fob or something potentially before this thing's gonna fire off. So this could get very, very interesting as we get into this. Horn delete, there's the wire. It's been laid down, looks like. A couple times maybe. Not sure what this red is this is the original tank or not. I would assume that it is. Here is the last of the original color. Get some moisture from my windmaker on there. That's how beautiful it used to be. It's too bad. This is like a plastic poly or something. Like flex seal. They flex sealed the bike. It's got scales. Literally. It's Terrible. Different handlebars. I'm not even sure what these are from. This is all cut, homemade, tack. Probably doesn't even work. It does have a wire maybe coming up? No, that's just a random wire there. This would have been for the windshield mount, so the forks weren't changed at least. Front brake. This is all busted up. Throttle, throttles. Again, this should be fuel injection. That's pretty busted up. I do have some parts and pieces for the bars here. This one is really bad. I mean, this thing's been dumped, you know, more times than a teenager, and I ain't kidding you looking at it. So who knows if that's even getting clutch engagement. We'll probably have to take a look at that or try to fix it if we can. Mirrors are all scraped up. I think these were the original mirrors. 
on it. It did have a nice, beautiful, big, wide seat. There's a little jumper seat that goes on here now. Well, goes on here. I'll try to find that. I got it somewhere in storage. It used to be a two-up. Had a pad here at one point, I think. Brakes are shot. We'll ignore that. Oh, boy. What a mess. <laughs> well, as you can see, I really done her this time. I, I I think where we got to start is just throw a battery on this thing, start hooking up wires that don't spark or make things melt, turn the switch and just see what happens. We got to hear the thing turn over, right? And then we can test spark and then I'm sure it's going to need all the fluids and everything. It's been sitting outside for years and we'll start working through the little stuff, but basic things. Does the engine turn, fuel, Sparkles. Plan. Yep. Super starts. Agon Agon mm absorbed mat power sports. Sure. Whatever. It's the cheapest one I could get. Okay. I uh, was just seeing. That was probably fuchsia. Almost red. I thought I opened the box. It didn't have the screws on the thing. And then it turns out they were inside of this on the positive terminal. <laughs> I mean, I knew that. It just, you know, just seeing if you guys knew that as well. Now, I've got to get this brown booze bag out of the way. Probably should vacuum these leaves out, but yeah. i just plop this puppy in here. This is the sad cable. This one must be the positive. It's always happier, you know, for some reason. Get this really close to the frame so it arcs. Yeah, we'll put it in the top. My biggest concern here, this thing should run. You know, these technology hasn't changed since, you know, 19 whenever, early 1900s. But the Securita. Well, that was promising. I just touched this and the speedometer went <laughs> and bounce to one mile an hour. Just did it again. I'm not making this up. It's, here I'll show you. See, what does that mean? I don't know. We're getting it in though. <sighs> Tight enough to test maybe. Nothing. Oh, neutralis. Oil, oh, see that key thing came on and stuff was clicking down here. Oh. Okay. I got to go through this and try to figure out what's going on. I wonder if we shouldn't just hit the Okay, well, here we go. Let's look at this over, remove some tape. I'm not positive, but I'm thinking this isn't factory here. And it's got to be, I wonder if that's jumping the fuel pump. And this is just pulling power from something. This gray wire. I'm going to take this apart, see if there was another wire coming out of it. That has a fuse holder. And I'm guessing this is how he started it. Somehow. At some point. This is taped together. I got to just start going through this stuff and try to figure out what's what. I think a guy has got this figured out. So I put a fuse in here, tested all this, of course, to make sure that these you know, Walmart fittings were still working and they're hanging in there, believe it or not. But I'm thinking this is ignition and fuel, I think. 
because when I put a fuse in here, I can hear the fuel pump running, which is in the tank. That runs, and I'm assuming it's going to give us sparkles. We'll have to test that in a minute. This switch wasn't working because all these years sitting outside got really rotten. But if I touch these two wires together right here, we get engine crankage. I'll show you. When a guy went on ahead and did this just a minute ago, it blew leaves and some rust chunks and stuff out of the pipes here. So it's definitely got compression. So that's good. I probably should have checked the oil before I just started whacking on this thing, but. Pipe layers, piping. Engine, rotating. Well, now that I know this bad boy rotates, I didn't want to waste a bunch of money. So I'm gonna go ahead and head down to the hardware store and pick up some Earl, a couple other things, maybe some sparkulators. It's probably definitely gonna need that. I need an on off switch for whatever wire nut house fuse thing we got going on here. And then another momentary switch for the starter. And that could be a toggle or a button, doesn't really matter. But we're gonna have switches just a swanging on this thing going down the highway. But great news, the engine still rotates. I didn't even pull a sparkulator. I was that confident in the old, you know, hardly Davidson. <laughs> Lots of whistle do's and could be's. Here's that same type of button. Horn button would work. Basic on off. They should have a momentary, you know, regular switch. That might last a little bit longer than that, but I don't know. Guy settled on these. Got an on off and a momentary, and they're plastic. Reason being is they're the cheapest ones, and plastic doesn't rust as bad as, you know, some of the other doodabs. Okay, guys, gonna go ahead and just get these two switches bleep blooped in there. So we got some digital boop boop and on this uh, little wire in here. Okay, we got the switch. No headlight. Anyway, that's running the fuel pump, that's good. And then we got our starter switch, which is a momentary. That's good. Now we're gonna test sparkles. So I'm gonna take my little light of did dib. We're gonna put this in line here. If we got sparkles, that'll flash this light bulb every time that it hits there. Nothing. 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 Hmm. Well, we got no sparkles on this, so I'm going to do the easy thing first and just run a test light through this little fuse block back here. I'm assuming, I don't know. I guess I could get on the line and look, but <laughs> who needs constructions? We're gonna look for a fuse that's bad. If there's one that's bad, replace it. And then see what happens, you know? Some folks don't realize this, but these fuses are made in a specific way, even the bigger ones, where they have a little metal post hanging out so you don't have to pull these suckers you can just test them right there i think that one might be dead so i'm going to go through and test all these sure enough this 10 right there is no good got power coming in no power going out. Hmm. And this one's dead because we're sending power through the switch. 
through that circuit, which is probably the fuel. Well, we could find out, I guess. Yep. So that's the fuel pump fuse. And we're just hot wiring it, and this is now the fuse there. So I did end up going on a line and Google Web in this, and I found out that these over here are spares, and we were missing two accessories and P and A. So I put them in. The ignition one is fine, but get this. I turned this on because I was trying to get headlights, which I'm not getting anywhere. But we got the odometer. 63,672 miles on this thing. Wowzers. So whoever stole this in just a couple of years, literally... They must have been daily driving this thing. I, don't, I mean, they put in two years as many miles as my brother did in a, a decade. I mean, that's just crazy. Usually around 30, 40,000 miles, that's typically considered high mileage-ish. 60, 70, 80,000, they're tired. It's gonna be interesting to see if this thing will even fire. We're still having problems getting sparkles. We're kind of working through stuff right now. Well, I got the battery back out. I'm kind of working backwards here, trying to think like this thief would have, because he had to hot wire this thing, obviously. And the speaker wire here, this one is stripped. This one is already used for fuel. We're not getting ignition. I'm wondering if this would have been ignition, which means it probably would have went to the kill switch. So I'm up here now. I think this is that other wire. And see, here's the one that goes up into this scotch lock. These are really high quality, you know. We'll pretend we didn't see that. This one has a scotch lock on it, but no other wire. And I'm wondering if this got pulled out because of white is ignition coil and this is power then that would go around the switch though. You wouldn't be able to shut it off. Huh. I wonder if this was supposed to be in with this switched mess. I don't know, but the, what I'm saying here is I'm gonna put the battery back in and then touch this here, see if it shoots sparks, and then test for sparkles again. I even switched to my old trusty sparkle tester instead of the new one. Because these are from Hobo Freight and, you know, 1 out of 74 are good. Just wanted to make sure, you know, that it wasn't just a simple light bulb or something like that. But once we get sparkles, I think we might be in pretty good shape. I should probably put some gas in here pretty soon, though. It sounds like that pump is really screaming in there, running dry. Who knows what's in that thing? Okay, let's see here. Got a new battery clamp on over here. And that's holding the broken wire that I'm hoping was a happy cable and not a sad one. And then I got this hooked on to the spotlight switch and this is the wire dangling off the tank. And that's got power. So, now we touch this to the scotch lock. There's a loose wire in here. Hope you don't fry the computer. That was a fuel pump. And the headlight. Okay. I don't smell anything smoking. All right, kill switch on. Got too much going on here. Ignition on. Switch. It just fired. What in the devil? That scared my socks off. It just fired. Well, I guess we got, I guess we got spark. What in the world? Let's try it again. Mazel. Uh, fuel pump. I got that running this time before it primed. 
this thing might just fire up. that wire off, it's still running. So what's controlling spark then? Nothing changed. Well, that's controlling spark now. What? How do you shut it off? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. I, okay. It, it runs. <laughs> Somehow, some way. I have no idea what I did. But uh, there you go. That's how you hot wire a Harley with security on it. That wire seemed to do something that wasn't happening before. Wilson connected, it fired, however... Now unconnected, it does the same thing than it did when it was connected, but has a different result than when it wasn't. And this switch doesn't seem to have a bearing on anything other than a fuel pump, but it doesn't switch the ignition. The kill switch still does, that's not connected. Hmm. Well, anyway, fires right up. Let's just make sure it's repeatable here. This goes on, that's on, kill switch on. Explain that one to me. All right, well, shoot. Let's, uh, I'm gonna pull these sparklators out. Let's go ahead and rebuild them. And by that, I mean just twirl it through the cheek poker and spit on it a couple times. Then we should probably do a three hole change on this as far as the oil goes. It's been sitting forever. It's been out in the elements. It's obviously very, very high miles. Uh, who knows if it's even got oil in it. I probably shouldn't even, you know, ran it like that, but let's just pretend, pretend we didn't do that. <laughs> All right, spark lighters coming out. It sounds pretty good too. I mean, for the first time firing up in years, didn't really struggle at all. This is the motorcycle stand the experts use. You know what I mean? It'll, yeah, super sketchy, imminent death or injury, but we're gonna roll with it. I think the spring is missing on this. Yep, confirmed. All right, so we're gonna be changing the primary the transmission and the engine oil all in one shot. We'll throw a filtre in it as well. This thing is blacker than my soul. And I don't know who knows when that was changed. Years and years ago, I'm sure. For now I did disconnect my new battery cable, so this isn't blowing sparks, but we'll leave it there. Just in case, and then a guy went ahead and just you know kept those scotch locks in there that apparently I just jiggled and now they work. But I had a tape. So, you know, if it works, is it really a dumb idea? That's what I'm saying. All right, let's get these sparkulators out, see what them look like. Well, the rusty one in the back here was finger tight. That's what you want, you know. That's what you want, you know, on these rigs. <sighs> what am I gonna do with this paint? Maybe I just leave it, you know. It's got a story to tell, you know what I mean? Plus, if you dump it, no one's even gonna know. The dogs are just raising heck with the cattle out there. Hmm, I'll let them be. Oh boy, richer than Elon. What kind of plug is this, E3? No, I just need an E1. Gee whiz, I bet them are 20 bucks a pop. Mm. Oof to me. I'm gonna have to clean them up.
Well, his E3 million plugs is rebuilt. And by that, I mean cheek poker and about a gallon. If you'll make it happen or spray, just tss, tss. that'll bring them around. Well, it should be fine. We'll run an Italian tune up on this thing if I remember. That'll clean up the rest. Well, let's move on and drain the tank, the engine oil, drain the transmission over there, and then we'll come over here and drain the primary as well. Well, we're over here on the drinker side of the unit. We got to get our oil tank drained and our go forwards, doesn't go backwards machine drained as well. Pretty darn easy on these units. The tank here, you could see the drain nozzle right there, but basically a back peg and that comes under here. And right here is our five eighths and then the shift box. Up in between the shocks here is going to be another 5 8 right up in there. That'll drain the transmission. Five speeds are up here, six speeds are back here. So this is going to be a five speed gearbox, and then we'll go to the other side and do the primary. But let me get a pan slit under here and we'll drain these juices out. <laughs> Everything on this rig is 5.8 sparkulators, drain plugs. I don't know, more stuff. Okay. Got some sort of leak down here. That's good. Can a guy even get the plug out? Got that out, and boy, is there metal on that plug. That ain't good. I'm gonna pop this open here on the shift machine so we get some air flowing. I'm gonna pop this one as well, get some air flowing there. That metallic right there is a ton of metal. There's a bunch built up on here as well. Transmission, not in very good shape. I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. It's high miles, you know. I use gear oil in the gearbox that is not engine oil. A lot of people will run 2050 in all three. Engine, transmission, primary, you can do that. A lot of people do that, as long as it's like a synthetic or something like that. I've always kind of been a fan of the gear oil and the transmission because they seem to shift smoother, or at least feels that way or sounds that way, in my opinion, with the miles that I put on, but Either end or, you just need some sort of dinosaur juice in there. Engine oil coming out. Doesn't look too bad. See that whiskey color? But I had some moisture. At some point I'm expecting to see a little bit of water come out. They should separate. I'll let this sit for a second and I could scooch my pan over. But while that's continuing the drain, we could start over here need to get this cover off and once we get this cover off then we can take the drain plug out which is right here where is it right there we want this off so we get some more air in there so it drains easier and uh, we need to fill it through there as well i want to try to get this off first before we drain it because if i strip all of these out which is likely very then we're having a really bad day because i got all my juice out of there so we're going to try to get this off Probably a T27 or something like that. See if we can break them free. Sometimes if guy just yells when you do this, it helps him not strip out. You know what I mean? See? That one came out. Yeah, I think we're going to be just fine. Whoop that! 
Come on out of that. Oh, see? So yelling is definitely the key. I think it puts more torque in your back. No, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but write it down anyway, just in case. Okay. I think about the 30 some thousand miles of heck that this bike went through. Could you imagine? There's the saying, ride it like you stole it. This thing was stolen. This thing, I bet you, was wide open 99% of the time. And the speed it was going when it got pulled over proves that. It's got a newer gasket in here. Hmm. Is this guy trying to maintenance it? I don't, I don't understand what's happening here. Well, the clutch nut's been rounded off. Oh, man. <sighs> smells like lasagna left in the sun for three weeks. Whew. So that's good. I think we can go ahead and drain this now. I need a torkel do dabber. So I get that one. Torkel do dabber. It's a torkel do dabber. I think it's a 5 16th, but I could be wrong. No, I'm not. Where did I put the wrench now? Get this wrench. This wrench to scoop this one. Scoop this one this way. And then put that one down and then pick up this one. There we go. I might get crazy and drain the gas on this. Nope, definitely not. We'll just add a bunch of old gas from the lawnmower tank. And that'll blend, you know. There we go. That had water in it. What in the world? That's like ATF. Yeah, that's wrong. Perfect. It's a mix of ATF and water and metal flakes and clutch material. So we're gonna pretend we didn't see any of that. And we're just gonna fill this up with 2050. Well, we got all the juices drained out. Time to put some oil on this thing. Now, you guys know me, I run the cheapest oil or whatever's on sale. It's got a little bit of vitamins in it. Now in this case, you probably could run 1540, but these old pigs like the 2050 more than anything, and stuff that's able to withstand extreme heat because these run like an 1800s hit and miss. There's not a lot of technology and they're air cooled so they get extremely hot. If you ride, you know what I'm talking about. Sitting at stoplights when it's 95 degrees out. Whee! You know? Anywho, I picked up this uh, VR1. It's got a lot of vitamins and dinosaurs in it and pretty good with the heat, you know what I mean? And it's cheaper than buying the Harley Davidson oil. All that stuff is just, you're just buying a name brand. I'm sorry for you purists, but you are. I'm gonna explain more here in a little bit when we get on the other side. I think I'm supposed to put three QTs in here. This has got a meter on it. Three, I think I need to do one more. And then we'll run it. And then we can check it again. Ah, it's probably close enough. Boom. Might even be a skoosh over full, but that's okay. There we go. Chrome will get you home. Nope, but it looks good on the side of the road. <laughs> By the way, I did notice it still has uh, Vance and Heinz pipes on it. This thing sounds good, wide open. You just wait. You're going to hear it here pretty soon. Okay. Got to clean this funnel. 
So I'm going to use it again here in a second. Oh, shoot. I think I got the wrong one. Not 7590. We're going to go with 75140 gear oil. Now, again, if you want to save some money, you could just throw the 2050 motor oil on there if you want. Some of this gear oil, it gets awfully expensive. I know it. I see it too with my eyeballs. 32 ounces, one quart, which happens to be this here bottle of the King Purple or whatever this is, is 32 ounces. We're just gonna blast this in there. Color good. Yeah, it's, yeah. There we go. So over here on the prime area of the unit, we gotta get some Earls back in here. Now obviously, that's not very easy to do. You guys saw me using this funnel. I bought this when I bought the Earl, a couple bucks or whatever. Used it for my engine oil. And then what you can do is cut it like this and set it in like this. Now a guy can just pour his oil and it's gonna run right in like that. If you're not satisfied with that, it is kind of a slow process. You could find one of these smaller ones like this, set it in like that, and do the same trough effect like that, and this will flow pretty fast. I'm gonna, this is my look at me motorcycle funnel I've had for a long time. It's been around, works pretty good. That's the way I do it, but I just wanted to show you both in case you happen to have one. Pretty simple, we'll throw some oil on this thing, put the cover back on, we got fluids changed. We got two different wires going on here. That one's also got some zip lighters on it. Yeah, ignore that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's gonna be a while. Cover going back on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Live to ride, ride to st stay alive, Davidsons. Sure. I've been going to the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally since I was 17 or 18 years old. Used to work at the Buffalo Chip when I was a kid, and then, of course, he had the ride there every year. I've been there and everything, Yamahoos, Suzuki's, homemade bikes, Harley Davidsons, you name it. Hip, 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 hoop, hip. All right. Oh. 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 Well, we made a lot of progress on the Harley Davidson tonight, but it's getting pretty late. I think a guy's gonna clean up his mitts a little bit, go spend some time with the family, and get the boys to bed for school tomorrow. Now in the morning, we could finish putting this thing together, get some fresh gas in it, fire it up, let it idle, see if the transmission works, the brakes. We've got some controls to fix up here, and then hopefully we can get this thing back on the highway by, say, lunchtime, go tootle around a little bit. I need to get some wind therapy. Is that the saying? I think so. See you in the morning. Well, here I am. I'm back. Good morning. Let's uh, finish up the fluid changes here. Got to pop the oil filter tray off underneath here. Now, if you cared about your bicycle, you can take some rags, put it underneath the filter tray here, or a piece of cardboard or whatever. Side of a beer box works really good. And that'll run the juice off the side of the case and down below into a pan. But you know the deal. Now, oil filtrates. This is gonna hurt your purest hearts. I'm sorry, I didn't do nothing. I'm just here to report the news. 
stop spending all the big bucks on the Harley Davidson filters. This puppy right here is five to six more dollars than a Wix, and a Wix is a really good filter. And you cut this thing open and you're not gonna be happy. You really are not gonna be happy. So just take that into consideration when you're putting your filters on your bikes. You do enough of them over the year, you do enough of them over the year, you can save yourself 50, 60 bucks. You know what I mean? Okay, where did I put the other one? Great, gotta try to get up and get the floor is slippery. Okay. Let's see, take some oil right off the floor. There we go, lube up the ring a little bit. This is a Wix 57148, you know, and this is going to work just fine. Get that out of the way. And clean this up a little. Sure. Mm hmm. Good enough for the girls we date. Speaking of dates, I'm going to write the date and mileage on this because I don't know if the audio meter works on this bad boy. And a guy's got to keep track of what in the world is going on. Yeah. That'll do. And then some hand cleaner. Get the rest of it off. There we go. Now I just got to clean up a little bit. I'll get right back to her. Well, we got all the Earls changed on this. We're doing pretty good as far as fluids going, but speaking of the fluids, we got gasoline in the vehicle, and I'm a little bit concerned about this. Now, this has been outside for umpteen years. It's pretty likely that moisture has crept into that tank. If we got a rusty tank, that's a big concern. Yes, we've already ran it a little bit, but there's a reason I haven't just had it running a lot of bits. A long, a long more, more than a little bits. Anywho, I don't want rust in the tank. We're going to have to address that. Now, it's fuel injected, and I don't know what's going on with that. But we could pop the cap off, throw a camera down there, and just look at the shape or the condition of the tank, and maybe we'll get super lucky. I just don't want to plug the pickup screen and the filter. There's going to be some sort of injector doodabber and all that stuff, and we get into a mess, and I just don't want to deal with that. So let's jam a camera down the tank here and just see what we're looking at. You know what I mean? If my camera will even do anything. Of course, I bought the absolute cheapest garbage camera man can own. <laughs> so chances are we're gonna see a potato. No way. Oh, there's a little bit. All right, get over here and look at this. Standing over there, for Pete's sake. Hard to see, I know, but see the liquid there? Above that is the tank wall. It's exceptionally clean. Down in that corner, that's a little bit of rust starting. See down in there? But it's not terrible. The side of the tank looks really, really good. I think, fortunately, we're lucky. And I'm just going to pretend that I didn't see the makings of rust starting down in here. I'll just ignore that for now. So if we just pour some different bad gas in with the bad gas and mix it, I think we might be okay. This here's the junk we put in the lawn machines. But if it runs good enough, We'll sneak down to the co-op and get some 86 no ethanol. About the only good gas can left here. Unless you find the old steel ones or metal ones, like on the Vice Grip Garage t-shirt. Them are probably the best cans. You know, it's the flexible rubber spout that fades to white after 37 years. Those are my favorite. Of course, we need the Italian tuna, 
I'm going to throw some barium in right on in here. And that'll help clean the combustion chambers, the sparkulator, the valves. This is a lot for the little amount of fuel we got in there. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Nailed it. Okay, that should be good. Now, I need to move on to these hand controls. These things are a mess. Looks like it's been dumped on both sides. This one's split. Not even quite sure what's going on with the throttle cable. It's got like flathead screws from the 50s holding it together. This one's got wire and zip ties. So I'm just gonna get in here, start taking all this apart. I do have some lever mounts. Unfortunately on this side, it's a whole master cylinder, but I think it needs it. I'm gonna start reassembling this with the parts and pieces. We definitely need a clutch. Well, at least just to take off. You know what I mean? Make them bang gears from there. Front brake would be nice because I got a Mr. Deeds foot on the right side of my body. So the rear brake is probably not going to get used much. Oh, all right. Allen keys, Phillips, wood screws, and flats. We got updates. Breaking news. I'm trying to put this new control stuff on, which by the way, just these couple few parts, you know, cost more than the whole motorcycle. Because Harley Davidson. You know what I mean? That's that's really great. Problem I'm having is these terrible handlebars are thicker than a standard handlebar which is what I ordered all the controls for. So, you can see down here, well, that's a bad example, that's a bad example. Where'd all my parts go? Well, anywho, they had to waller out the controls to fit these handlebars. They're not even circular, they're like egg-shaped. Um, here's an example, see that? They're all like dremeled out all the way down to the threads. So I kind of started doing the same, trying to achieve the same effect. Unfortunately, what that means is when I put the correct handlebars on, these are no longer gonna handlebar. So that's unfortunate, but guy really wants to ride this thing. So we're kind of just trying to do what we can to make do and get her down the road. So I'm gonna continue to work on that. Got the throttle. I believe the throttle is set up. I had to run down a Harley. You get one brass ferrule for the cable. $18. I ain't kidding you. That's not including the hour drive there and back. More than that. So now I'm on to uh, front brake. Got to waller those out. Clutch handle, got to continue to waller that out. Uh, left hand top control, get that on. With the buttons that don't do anything, basically the only button that works right now is kill switch, which is pretty much all we need. But I do need that clutch handle, so that's gonna be the most important. Decided to go ahead and just put a whole new front brake lever and master cylinder on, so we have a little bit of breakage. Making progress. Got new upper, new lower, sans turn signal, which isn't hooked up. New brake lever. All this isn't busted, it's actually connected. Part of this having some stability is this being interlocked with this through a little gijimawoo right here. And we got that now. There is a gap here. So I used some different hardware. Got some extra length on that. It is very stout. I don't think that's going anywhere. It's a better alternative than grinding the handlebars down and trying to get a fitment. I don't want to weaken this. A guy loses a steering wheel, and then what do you do? I mean, you could throw a vice grip on here, but I don't know if we'd have that time. You know what I mean? Got the clutch lever assembly on. Gonna go ahead and put a new clutch lever on because it came in the $74 million kit. 
of this bracket. So let's go ahead and do that. I got a new upper for this side and I went ahead and decided not to get new grips since we have you know enough money to buy a new wide glide into this old abandoned bike here. Let's save the $80. You know what I mean? It's just fine the way it is. We're getting really close to having functioning good controls on this bike. Man, I hope we can hit the highway with this thing. It's beautiful weather out. The only concern I have is, well, that and this and, uh, you know, that and this roundy thing there. But this, you know, this works. But other than that, it's good. Yeah, I got updates. Progress has been made. We got, um, all oh, this is pretty well buttoned up, diced in. Got to put some juice in here and bleed on it. But this works the way it should. Pins in it. There's no zip ties or any of that stuff. And more importantly, this seems to be working. We're going to have to adjust the clutch once the engine is up to operating temperature. Then we can pull the clutch in, try to grab a gear, make sure we can shift into gear, and then see what kind of slip we have coming out into said gear. This isn't right, and for some reason, I, the guy really messed this thing up. You know what I mean? I can't explain. I can't explain this. For some reason, he also cut both sides of the handlebar, so both hand grips are short by about an inch or more. But nonetheless, I got to get this grip back on. So what I'm going to try to use is spray paint. It's what I use on all my dirt bikes. It's a lubricant. If you work fast, that spray paint will dry and get super tacky, and this grip will stay on, and it's never going to come off. Look how much shorter that is. Oof, da may. It's been a couple moons since the guy tried on this, but we'll give her a whirl. I'm going to use the dark Ford blue, because that'll make it work better. Okay, juice, liberal juice. Then, just get this guy, and just slide her on. Boom, rotate it. Oh yeah, there we go. She's already getting sticky. That puppy ain't going nowhere. Oh, got paint on the floor, where my regs go? Bleeding on the brachiitis here. You know, talk about the good old times. The way things used to be. <sighs> I wonder what Clint Black is doing today. Jeez, I think I already got it. Can't be. Well, I'm looking right at it. Ain't got no bubbles. That was easy. Guy's got the battery on boil. Any good project starts with that. Even though it's new, I've worn her down. You know what I mean? Trying to fire this thing up. Speaking of firing, I wanted to actually take a look at the cam tensioner on this bike. Maybe even pull the primary and lube this thing up and go through the motions of an old V-twin, but she popped right off. And part of that is happenstance. Part of it is mistake. I'll admit it. I didn't know if the switch was just fuel or fuel and ignition or what was going on. We were testing it earlier and bang, just popped right off. So there you go. Anywho's, I was on the line with my digital pocket computer box, beep booping around, and it turns out there's a couple different cam tensioners, and I think they changed them in 06 or 07, somewhere around there. And there's a gooder one and a badder one. <laughs> and 07 up, or late 06 and up, I guess was the gooder one. So I thought I was in the clear, but then I got to looking, and the 07 is supposed to have a six speed. Well, I ain't no dummy, and I wasn't born yesterday, I'll tell you that much. I can look at that gearbox to tell you it's a five speed. So I called up the Davidson of Harley, 
and said, run this VIN. Yes, it's stolen. And there ain't, you know, I am not the one that stole it, all right? But anywho, long story short, we ran some numbers. This is a 2005, not a 2007, misled. That's weird. <laughs> so that explains the five-speed transmission, but that also means it's got the worse or less good or issue of the cam tensioner units on this. Now we'd have to pull off the whole side cover, take a look at the chain. There's a little cam tensioner on there. Basically it's a little bushing that pushes against the chain to keep your cam and crankshaft, everything taunt. You know what I mean? But when this fired, I didn't hear any chain slop or banging around. Timing seemed to be there. I think we're okay, which is pretty incredible for the mileage of this bike. Typically over 50,000 in the HD world. Some of you might disagree. Look, that's okay. You can bleep bloop it down below what mileage you think. But for me personally, I've had 11 kajillion, nine or million of these suckers. And what I'm saying is 50,000. It's time to start going through the thing. Cam tensioner, chains, primary chain, clutches. You got to confirm oil pressure. You got to go through the transmission, wheel bearings. It's got some miles, which is fine. That's just the normal part of owning them. But this one sounded pretty goodish. It fired up and listen, I'm lazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if it runs, it runs. You know what I'm saying? So I think we're just gonna move on to a pre-flight checklist. And I happened to get a sock on my foot today, which means we're women. And that means ready to ride. Mr. Deeds foot and all. So let's go through this thing. I gotta find a seat, throw something on there, or a pillow or something. We're just gonna stab this thing on the highway. We do have a clutch adjustment right before we take off. We're gonna ignore the rear brake, see what happens. Now beforehand, I did mention that the front tire here, she is rotted like that tomato movie. It's pretty bad. Listen, this thing needs Replay. If you lose a steer tire on a motorcycle, you are having a very, very bad day. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and not do anything on the front here, but we are gonna check the tire pressures. We gotta make sure that these are set up right and handling, acceleration, cornering, stopping, air pressure plays a pivotal key in all of that. That one's got wind. Yep, so we're pretty good there too. So, I mean, what's next? Let's find the seat, or a seat, throw that on this thing, and go jam this thing in some wind. Haven't even idled it more than a minute, that's okay. Idling and open road is two entirely different stories. I gotta get rid of this air cleaner. Anybody that knows anything about bikes knows that these then come with a 107. Not even sure why that's on there. And this is like a deck screw or something. Cross threaded into the throttle body. Yeah, that's probably never gonna come out and go back in. Ooh, we do gotta fix this peg quick. This ain't good. You know what I mean? Guy tickled this foot peg down with a ball peen hammer. By that, I mean a 25-pound Tanya Harding. She came down. Not sure what bent, but here it is. Anywho, the foot pad done came right off. And these normally have kind of a rubber grommet to accept the vibrations of the 1,642-year technology in the engine here. And they just, it's gone. Now, it's important to have a smooth operating surface here you're sliding your foot to the brake. Wow, that might work. That's the first time I pushed it. Huh. Slick. Or if you're sliding off to get your foot on the ground to balance the bike, it's important not to have any obstructions. So I'm going to run this giant zip tie right around the center here. Like so. And just snug her up. Snug her eyes. There we go. That seems to be doing the trick. Got 14 Leathermans laying around. You lose one, you buy another. 
fixed. Well, that's good to go. All right, let's see if we can find a seat to this thing. And then we'll fire it up and adjust the clutch. Well, here's what I could come up with. I don't, I don't know. Looks homemade. It says comfort cell. I just. I mean, that should work, right? So let's clean up the area a little bit. Oh, wait, do we need mirrors? I think I need one to be legals. In the great state of Tennessee. It's also a helmet state. I found out the first day I moved in and got pulled over immediately for riding my other motorcycle without a helmet. So I have to dig one of them up. That's appropriate for motorcycles. Custom. 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 I mean, I'd go head to head with the Tuttles. Right now. The alligator plastic paint really sets this thing off. I ain't kidding you. Well, sure. This switch is falling apart. That's fine. And uh, something's leaking. This seems normal. Never even looked at the belt. That's also okay. This doesn't fasten or fix in any way, shape, or form. That should be fine. But one thing I can't live without is a kickstand spring. That puppy's just missing. So we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do there to keep the stand of kicks up so that's not bouncing off the ground the whole time. You know what I mean? This is a pretty sharp bike. Now that I'm looking at it, nope. It's uh, seen better days. Alrighty. Ooh, this is gonna be touch and go. Ooh, kicks down the holder up or doesn't work. I use the throttle return spraying off of a, you know, generic kit for like a small block Chevrolet or a Ford and She's a swain, as John Anderson would say. All right, we need to test the clutch. Key on, fuel pump switch on, neutral. Cold ground. Oh yeah. See, that cam tensioner is just fine. All right, clutch in, first gear. Went right in butter. I guessed on this adjustment. Oh yeah. Nailed it. I don't think we gotta change nothing. Now can I get it back to neutral? It's always a trick. There we go. It's always embarrassing rolling up to a tavern and you're sitting there rocking your motorcycle for 48 minutes, trying to get neutral. Just shut her down, feller. Figure it out later. You know what I mean? Most of the time you want it geared to park anyway. Okay, we got a mirror. We got a license plate off of a utility trailer from 1986. We got half of a front brake. I pretended to check the back brake. Wind in the tire, sure. Old gas, check. I think. I'm gonna grab a helmet and we'll just. I don't know, let's just ease it down the road. Boy, that spring ain't gonna last long. I got about three tavern stops with that spring. And she's gonna be done. Okay. Few updates. First of all, for safety, I'm wearing a helmet that's five times too small. Not normally, you know, I'm not normally looking like a chip on. That's a helmet. Safety. Also, the engine and transmission area is smoking like crazy. I got weeds and vines and all sorts of stuff burning. 
We'll ignore that. The front fork seemed to be bent. It's not handling. It ain't handling the way it should handle. So we're going to ignore that. The low fuel gauge is stuck on. That's fine. Engine light stuck on. That's fine. Speedometer seems to work. I don't know. I mean, we're just going to keep easing it through the hills here, have a little bit of fun. Or at least until the kickstand grinds off. <laughs> Great. Well guys, about 50, 60 miles in. I don't really know where I'm going. Just, you know, letting the breeze blow me. I just, this helmet, feel like a bobble doll, you know, with the wind, but it's a good habit. I kind of like to live to see the old grandkids running around, you know what I mean? Anywho, it's doing good. Uh, allegedly has a dead spot between 95 and 105 high RPM. It's just, it's cutting out. Engine lights flashing, pretty sure that means a misfire. Could be the sparkulators, could be the mouse chewed, chown, choosing. Could be, the, could be the lightning hoses. Otherwise, I don't, I don't know. I'm putting some uh, fresh 93s in it right now. Topping her off, we're just gonna keep riding. I don't know, we got lots of sunlight left. What else is a guy gonna do, you know what I mean? She's teching, she's hot. Well, fellas, guy made her back to the barn. Man, I tell you what, over the years, I've probably put, I don't know, million miles on bikes, various different models and makes. It never gets old for me, anyway. This one, well, we did about 180 today, which is really nothing, but I started kind of thinking about it. Well, for a forgotten bike that's been sitting for years, and this one is really messed up. I mean, there's been a lot of things going on here. I'm happy with it. We got a little bogging issue. The seat likes to fly off on the highway. The foot peg zip tie slipped off. There's plenty of work to do on the bike. I just don't know what to do with the thing. Try to rebuild it back to stock, how it was. Maybe make a custom bike out of it. I don't, I don't know. You guys can bleep bloop that down in the comments. The other thing I was thinking about riding is, man, it'd be fun to ride with some of you guys. And that got me thinking, when you're riding, are you a left, middle, or right kind of groove guy? And by groove, I mean, if you're going down a two lane highway, if you're riding a bike, you're either on the mustard or you're on the mayo or you're in the middle. Middle's a little dicey with all the oil dripping and stuff like that. I'm a mayo guy. I like to just be full sketch with all the debris and everything on the road. But I just don't trust the oncoming traffic anymore with the invention of cellular phones and lipstick and whatnot. But anywho, there we go. 2005 Harley Davidson Heritage Softail back on the highway, running and riding once again. It was a lot of fun, had a blast riding. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you very much. We'll see you very soon. Now I gotta clean a mess. Great.